Shalom. This is unplug them. Almighty. Guide my tongue, guide my heart, guide my mind to be in alignment with your will. Father, cause me to decrease and cause the Holy Spirit within me, the spark of you, to increase. The wrath of a wrath I am, based on Mark 13 and 18 and Matthew 24 and 20. Let's look at it. Understand what we're dealing with. Now, these are indeed the last days and times. You know it. You feel it. There are signs in the heavens to seal it. But let's look at a couple of things uh, specifically. A couple of changes that are going on and uh, how they align with these last days and times. And we're going to speak a little bit about everything from the blood moons to the Super Bowl ceremonies to Project Bad Weather, the fake snow, and how all of these things are working together for the good of those that love God in reality. Because when he pushes the reset button on this game, a lot of folks uh, says men's hearts will fail them because of fear. But uh, a, a lot of us are going to rejoice. So let's look at Mark 13 and 18. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Now let's look at Matthew 24 and 20. Y'all know I love Matthew 24. The church, a temple of the true Yeshua, which is broadcast live on the Unplug em channel. Uh, we base a lot of our teachings and beliefs off of Matthew 24 and 24 because we realize that we are the elect in full effect. 24 and 20. Jesus is explaining to the disciples after having been asked well, what will be the signs of thy coming? And of course, we know that there are lots of biblical scholars and people from academia that will tell you that, oh, when you take Matthew 24 literal, you're, you're doing uh, a disservice because Matthew 24 was only about the period of time that Jesus and the disciples were actually living in. And that's wrong and it's false. And it's 3 a.m., which is the hour which uh, many witches and occultists get up wake up some even set their alarms to get up at this time to pray prayers against the lord and against his anointed psalms 2 and 2 uh, the kings of the earth do ceremonies uh, along with their satanic priests at this time of night it's called the witching hour because of its mockery of the supposed 3 p.m hour that they say the yeshua was uh executed crucified if you will though wasn't upon a cross but a tree but again I digress uh, Matthew 24 and 20 Yeshua's answer uh, as he lays down a list of many different things that they should look for when they are to be on alert that his arrival is at hand and so we're going to go back up a little bit from 24 and 20 we're going to go back up a little bit and let's just go ahead and start off from 1, 24 and 1. Since we're based off Matthew 24, we're going to go ahead and uh, go all the way down to 20. It won't take long. And trust me, if it hurts you, you should really do some uh, soul searching, literally. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And yes, this was about a particular time in history. Part of what makes this, this book so supernatural and the reason why the evil ones use it as a playbook as opposed to using the Quran or using the Bhagavad Gita or using the Book of Coming Forth by Day and by Night or even using the Lesser Key, Greatest Key of Solomon or the Kabbalah as playbooks. They use those books for a variety of reasons but not as playbooks. Uh, 
they use this as a playbook because they understand the supernatural significance of this book being as it is filled with inspired writings from inspired prophets and of course from the master teacher the savior of the world the light uh, Yahshua who have come into flesh funky fresh and in 24 uh, he's not only talking about what happened at that time period but he's also because of his supernatural ability to speak in a way that transcended time and space he is also talking about these times that we are in today and how do you know this well academia won't tell you your worshipful master show sure enough won't tell you and pastor poke chop better not tell you because he'll get in trouble but the Holy Spirit will tell you all things. It will cause you to discern the impossible. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Let me just make sure it is 33 and 3. We will learn directly from God the things that have been hidden from us for so long. And he will give us supernatural ability to know the things that we know us not. And it is Jeremiah 33 and 3. Uh, let's go to 2. Jump back always a verse uh, and sometime over a verse just to get the full picture of a thing sometimes you need to see what came before it and what comes after it see so thus saith the lord the maker thereof the lord that formed it to establish it the lord is his name and you know in a spot like that they removed yahava or ahaya call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not you didn't get that jeremiah 33 and 3 call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not so now let's go back to matthew and again we're we're uh, experiencing the true and living messiah uh speaking in a way that is transcending time and space he is speaking about the present and the future at the same time why because he's speaking from the spirit and in the spirit spirit realm there is no time or tempo as we know it so he was able to speak about both simultaneously both the present and the future and if you really want to know about it, the past, too, because they're all the same thing, just like hot, warm, and cold are all the same thing. What thing? Temperatures. So past, present, the present, which is the gift of now, the present, live in the present, the gift of now, and the future, all one thing. What, what thing? Time. And there is no time or space in spiritual overstanding, in the spirit realm. And this is where Yeshua always spoke from because he was perfect like that. Uh, and Jesus, Yeshua, said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he was talking about the temple then and the temple now. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And of course, we know many people have translated that world in 24 and 3 to era or age, aeon. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, again, we know that it's the end of the world as we know it. It's not just the end of an age. The end of an age is, what, what does that mean? The end of an age is um, the end of a period of time. And the period of time that we've lived in for so long where you uh, drink, and eat, and be merry, and play with your technology, and believe what the news tells you without questioning it, and you believe what academia tells you without questioning it and if nasa tell you that the sky is magenta you're going to walk outside and see a blue sky and swear it's magenta 
another shade of magenta or something and we believe the illusions of the prince of this world that's the era that we're in now because he is the prince of this world for this era in this time and that time that era shall come to an end that's the end of the world the earth will continue to remain here the things on the earth is going to be a little different and I'm talking about Mad Max time cometh soon and very soon and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet so when you see these things happening you know you're near at the door even but it's not yet about to be uh, shut down the reset button has not yet been hit even when you see these things happening and let's even jump back to 24 and 5 let's look at that thing for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many now we know in the gospels we find the stories of um, people going around doing healings and the disciples getting wind of it and saying hey wait a minute they not rolling with us and um, he he allowed it he said well you know you let them let them do their thing you know he's doing it they, they're doing it um, in the same spirit as us uh, then it's in my name and it's all good but here he says that many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and so we're in that period of time now too where you have your Chris angel Christ angel doing deception on a high level and some people looking up to him for that then of course you have Obese Obama who is a false messiah if people want to find an antichrist because here there we shall find that there are many antichrists we'll find well he's one of them without a doubt what does it mean to be an anti-messiah an anti-savior he is to look like he's a savior or he's to perpetrate the fraud like he's a messiah messiah messenger of yah and in reality he of course uh, plays for the other team and I mean that in more than one way but uh, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars now we're hearing of wars and rumors of wars such and such getting ready to bang with such and such you know Ukraine and Russia China and Japan Iran and Israel you know uh, but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation which is going to be part of perpetrating fraud because remember it's a one world order so these nations are in league and in line with one another Japan not finna step out of pocket because of Lucifer China not finna step out of pocket because of Lucifer the US not finna step out of pocket the Ukraine not finna step out of pocket Russia not finna step out of pocket why because they're all taking orders from the same quarters and that's where Lucifer dwells hell for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines lack of food food shortages just all, all, all a famine means food shortage see that and pestilences sicknesses disease running rampant uh, bird flu Ebola uh, okay and earthquakes in diverse places you know the earthquake that hit Christ Church the earthquake that devastated um, Haiti uh, diverse places all over all these are the beginnings the beginning of sorrows then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted now wait a minute you ain't got raptured yet post Trib, excuse me, pre-trib believers. According to this, he says, "Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, 
and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is before rapture. Clearly. 24 and 9. Then 24 and 10. And I say that because there's some people who are so afraid of the things that are going to happen. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. You're afraid. Call the police. Some people are so afraid of what's going to happen. And, you know, I'm being a bit facetious because, you know, it can be fearful to the bravest of hearts. But remember that the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And some people don't want to swallow the fact that we're going to we're gonna go through a little taste. Yeshua went through more than a little taste. Look at the way that they did him. And you believe that you're going to receive your crown in heaven and, and you're going to get all of this glory and honor under Yeshua and you ain't served like he served. You have not received the, the, uh, uh, the opportunity to carry the burden of sacrifice the way that your master did, but yet you still expect to reap the benefits of the master. Some say even greater works as Yeshua, Jesus did say that. Well, then perhaps you're going to have even greater tests. And they did him bad. So for those of you who want all of the glory with none of his story, I feel for you. Because you, your heart may fail you. Uh, they're going to put us to the test, believers. And if we have faith, that's all right. Every test turns to a testimony and every lesson turns to a blessing. But we have to have the Holy Spirit close at hand. I mean, within. In order to endure. It's going to be a little, uh, a little heavyweight jamming. And that's all right. We built for this. Check it out. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then, after the nation rise against the nation, and the kingdom against the kingdom, and the famines and the pestilences and the earthquakes in diverse places, that's the beginning of sorrows. After the wars and rumors of wars, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall be hated, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We are fast approaching that climate. We're in that climate now where people dislike you for being a believer really think about that from the government level to the government projects level people dislike you for holding fast to your belief that the the word of the true and living god can be preserved in print the true and living god of course it could mankind has that much power to be able to uh, uh delete the word of the true and living the man would die before he was able to do such a thing if it's the word of the true and living so either the true and living can put his word down here and for us to access or he can't and if he can then where is it well it's scattered abroad in some ways because he does make us to seek and ye shall find to seek out knowledge as if it was silver and gold but at the same time he gave us a big bulk of it the bulk that you need indeed to read all in one nicely condensed work that they call the bible and of course we know it was compiled by this one and compiled by that one and this part was taken out and blah. and guess what the whole time the creator knew Oh, well, when they done messing with it, it's going to end up being the way I meant for it to be. That's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. But that's a true and living God. A God that's dead. His word could be erased and mixed around, and, uh, taken out, switched around, and um, nullified. But that would be a dead God, and I don't serve a dead God. Oh, they tried to fool in black population. By telling them that Jah Jah did. They shall, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. 
many shall be offended. Some of you believers are too easily offended. And I'm to give some tough love out here. You know, doing what little bit I can with what I have. That which I have, I freely give. Silver and gold have I none. But that which I have, I freely give. And I better freely give it. Or else I'm going to be judged. And I'm not going to have the most high put hands on me for none of you. So I got to do what I got to do. Love it or leave it. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Be about it or be without it. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We in that place now, ain't no love, you know. We've been there for a minute. And of course, the many false prophets are there all over the YouTube, aren't they? And everywhere else. And they are deceiving many. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Endure. That means to be able to put up with something. What are you putting up with? So many of you believe them. Tell you, you want to get up out of here before it get rough. It's a tight fight, but we win in the end, my friend. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So all of that's going to happen before the end come. And the end signifies not just the end of this age, this world as we know it, but the end of Lucifer's reign by the beginning of Yeshua's coming back, his reign. So therefore, you're going to go through according to Matthew 24. And it's okay because God doesn't put more on you than you can handle. But Pastor Pokechop and them don't want you to even believe that it's about to go down like this. So you get caught unawares. And so your heart will fail you. I'm telling you, it's going to be heart attacks. It's going to be a lot of heart attacks. And right now, the Most High is bringing home a lot of elders. Because a lot of the elders ain't going to be able to take what they finna to put down. And a lot of it's going to be fake. True. But... Is going to look quite convincing and convincing enough to cause people's hearts to fail them. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that's another name for the Antichrist. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Daniel the prophet gave a lot more game about the Antichrist than just about any other prophet single-handedly did. When you see this Antichrist, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, excuse me, stand in the holy place, who so readeth, let him understand. That means what I'm saying right here is heavy duty, heavyweight jamming. So put on your thinking cap. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Whew. Yeshua is telling them to flee. And we know scripture says that the wicked flee. When no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So someone is in pursuit of you. See? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. That means you got to be moving with the swiftness, the quicknificence. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. That means you can't be second guessing. You got to leave your Jordans and so be it. They ain't going to do you much good anyway. <laughs> and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, to nursing mothers and pregnant women. It's going to be extra hard for them in these days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. 24 and 20 and that's what I want to deal with at 24, 24 minutes in right we begin the lesson okay thank you for your votes of confidence about that it just it, some, it irks me sometimes you know but okay 24 and 20 pray that your flight be not in the winter there is an operation a government operation many of you are aware of HARP but there's an operation using the harp. 
What's the heart? Research it. H A A R P. Uh, high frequency Alaskan oral uh, 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 aurora research project. But harp. H A A R P. Uh, and you can look up uh, the book Angels Don't Play This Harp. Uh, and they'll give you a lot more information about harp and what it is and what it's not. But harp is, in short, a weather modification weapon that Russia has uh, at one time um, accused the United States of using against its citizens. But everybody knows that we have it. And it's located up in Alaska, they say. Uh, well, it is. They have pictures of it and everything. They'll take you on a tour, but they won't tell you it's for weather modification. Okay. They say it's to study the... Uh, <laughs> The northern lights, right? The the, the effects of the um, uh, the aurora, right? But anyway, harp and fake snow. <clears throat> so you saw the videos of people burning snow. Well, you have fake snow that's manufactured in, for for places that don't naturally produce the climate for snow. Well, the climate is altered by the harp harp think about a harp a harp is you know you open up the back of a baby grand piano and there's a harp laying down in there each key is connected to a string of the harp that's how a piano is really designed well harp is about striking the key striking the note the vibration boom, that it can be directed in different parts of the earth it can be shot up high into the clouds and disturb the clouds and cause rainfall or it can be shot down low into the earth and guess what it caused then? Earthquakes. But they hit the frequency, you know, high frequencies and low frequencies causing different types of weather and the way they aim it uh, causing different types of weather in different geographical locations. There's flooding in South Africa now. Uh, um, we uh, received some word through uh, Sister Shoshana from her, her peeps in South Africa that uh, the flooding there was um, getting unnaturally bad. And of course, if you remember when they first began talking about the uh, the vortex, the northern vortex, and how it was dropping temperatures to unbelievable lows in places that never had reached those lows before. Why now? Out of all the times, now, with the four blood moons on the horizon, and when I say on the horizon, I mean right around the corner, April 15th. 415 for ironically uh, Mother Campbell, Apostle Campbell's birthday, 414 14, three fours but uh, Passover 2014 we'll see the first of four blood moons to occur within uh, a year's time or so and that's odd blood moons usually occurred uh, centuries apart so for four to occur in that short span of time of under two years in about a year's time that's phenomenal okay but the uh, the strange anomalies in the weather will go along with the strange anomalies in the stars sun and moon Excuse me. it is 3.30 so now let's look at a couple of things and what's the, what's the significance of the blood moons? Well, be careful. Be careful to be very uh, cautious and wise as serpents. And, and, you know, dubious about what you hear from Zionists and academics. And especially what you hear from NASA. Why? Well, because the origins of the information have a lot to do with whether or not you should believe it or trust it. And we know that NASA, it's very origins, Nazi, NASA, Nazi, NASA, NASA, is, you know, there's a video on that. You want to hear it? Here you go. No, you got to find it. But uh, NASA is built upon mind control. It was built by Nazi scientists whose number one area of study was not um, astrophysics and not rocket science, but mind control. Please believe it. Hear me now. Believe me later. Okay, uh, NASA will be your key source of information for why certain things are happening in the skies. And of course, NASA's job will be to spin that all a certain way. And as opposed to 
giving us a full understanding of the spiritual significance of the things in the sky. They're going to attach everything to science fiction. That's all science is, is science fiction. They're one and the same. But they're going to attach everything to so-called science fiction. Because they're going to say that all of these things, these anomalous happenings in the sun, moon, and the stars have to do with alien life. Please believe it. Hear me now. But um, we can look back at Comet Ison and the fervor over that and look at the role that NASA played in that. We can look at how NASA plays a little game, a little problem, reaction, solution game, really and truly. Uh, where they give you the impression that you're on to something because they leave something up for a minute. Everybody looking at it, oh, oh, wow, you see, NASA made a mistake and they left that up and then they pull it. And game goofy as you are, you think that they made that, that level of mistake and then they pull it. And so you really believe it now because they pulled it. That's game, 101. That's called overplay for the underlay. And that's game. So you have to be able to peep game. What is game? Lies, deception. If you don't overstand deception, first of all, like Francis Chris Welsing says, the uh, uh, famous black psychologist, strong sister who uh, gave us a lot of great works in the consciousness community, one of which was the ISIS papers. And she has a famous quote where she says that until you understand uh, white supremacy and its uh, 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 dynamics, everything else that you think you know will only confuse you. And I like that, but I like to amend it because it's not all about white supremacy or black supremacy. It's about Luciferian supremacy, A and B. Until you understand the Luciferian agenda and the its connection to secret societies, everything else you think you know will only confuse you until you overstand that Lucifer, Shaitan, Helal, Azazel, is the prince of this world, according to scripture and according to your eyes, if you realize, realize, until you overstand that and understand that, everything else you think you understand will only confuse you. Have a wise dome of wisdom and know the ledge. Because uh, our people will perish for lack of knowledge. And hearts will fail for the inability to digest the heaviness, the heavyweight jamming that's going to be going on all around you. The heavyweight jamming. You're not serving God but mammon. So, you have Comet Ison, of course, that you know we heard a lot about. Uh, Comet Ison, and that goes along with um, some of the things that we know about what God said and, and what uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus said about the signs in the heavens. So let's look at, at a bit of that. And for those who are unaware about Comet Ison, I have a couple videos um, expounding on that. But there's lots of information on, on the web about it. And unfortunately, we as believers... We're a little game goofy about the wrong things. And we need to get up on game. Understand and overstand and understand the deceptions of the world going on around us outside of simply knowing what Pastor Pokechop wants you to know. You better be able to look up, Isaiah. But I don't see anything. Mass animal deaths also occurring. Um... In uh, Asia, uh, I believe it was in China, you had the uh, river turn blood red. Of course, uh, massive amounts of uh, animals of the sea and of the air washing up on ashore and falling out of the sky, respectively. And some of these things are happening through the evil ones self-fulfilling prophecies, meaning that they purposely create the conditions to play the role of the bad guys of the Bible. They create the conditions to cause these things to happen that will fulfill what the Bible says 
about bad things going on. They say, we're the bad guys. We set the stage for those things. That's how they look at things. You know, say hi to the bad guy for real. And, you know, for those of you who have been fooled into, from, from Scarface to the Dark Knight, been fooled into rooting for the bad guy, low key you've been psychologically conditioned predisposed toward making evil toward seeing evil as fair seeming and toward rooting for lucifer unbeknownst to you simply because by default in your mind you have denied the heru or the hero the first the original superhero superhero heru was the son in the uh, egyptian pantheon and Jesus is the son in the Christian Trinity. And uh, one is uh, a false sideshow, freak show, mirror image of the other. And of course, we know, uh, we know which one is true and which one is false. So when I say superhero, superhero, you know, don't get it twisted. You know, I know the difference. But uh, just for conversation purposes, the bad guys, the villains, are against the Heru or the hero, the son, Jesus. And so they play the role. And they want to fulfill what it says the bad guys are supposed to do. And they believe that because they have this harp technology, they are supposed to make it rough. Like Yahshua said for you to pray for it not to be. Pray that your flight be not in winter. So they say, oh, well, we the bad guys. Let's make sure it's in winter. And what's really bad when you have to go through it in winter? A blackout in a heat wave is one thing. Imagine a blackout, a lack of electricity in the dead cold of winter that they've been producing, inducing, and uh, uh, imposing upon us all. You see? They're creating the condition for Matthew 24 and 20. They're doing it on purpose. Yah is a merciful and gracious God, and he would not do that to you. He would not do that to me. But however, he allows for the evil one to do his dirty work, for lack of a better term. And, and you know, that's not the best way we can put that. Wendy Lynn, somebody help me out. But, but you show sure got the picture, didn't you? So it's not Yah that's uh, ca causing the weather to be a foul. It's Yah that's allowing the evil ones, the sons of Cain, the brotherhood of the snake, the Illuminati, to foul up the weather. So that they think they're you know, doing self-fulfilling prophecy. But they're doing something that can't surprise him. You can't surprise the almighty, true, and living. So the Most High already overstands that this is what they're going to do. This is the role that they're built to play. Uh, my man Abdullah Shabazz, my, my main man 50 Grand again and again and again, Shahid Abdullah Shabazz, uh, we would uh, exchange different information. I was deeply into the Hebrew Israelite studies and he was deeply into the Islamic studies and we lived together. And that was the second time I lived with a devout Muslim when I was a devout Israelite. And he point out to me that the Quran said Allah maketh the believer and the unbeliever and the Bible says that even God has preserved the wicked for the day of judgment they go hand in hand so these wicked ones they're playing their role they're doing their thing they in their pocket you get in yearn and they're uh, they, they think they're self fulfilling the prophecies and playing the roles of the bad guy okay in reality, it's all to set up what Yah needs to do in order to push that reset button. Yah is judging New Babylon. Who first? The major cities. Certain cities keep Babylon mystery system in effect. What type? These three types in particular will receive the wrath of a wrath I am. Cities with heavy Masonic symbolism, pagan gods and statues all about major cities and uh, the, the, yeah some smaller ones too but he's really going to put the mash down on major cities I'm sorry cities wrapped in witchcraft 
founded by witches, warlocks, wizards, masons, will receive the wrath of a Roth. I am. Cities that bring in revenue and or keep the Babylon way alive. Certain cities are more important to the infrastructure of Babylon. You see how they allowed for the, themselves, the, they themselves crippled the motor of the Babylon machine, the motor city. They crippled it and Yah allowed it because it was part of his way of judging a city that's for too long been possessed with the spirit of murder and the spirit of pharmacon, pharmacia, dope. Anytime you watch one of them flicks or one of them shows talking about the greatest dope men in history or, or greatest gangsters in history, you're going to find something about Detroit. And the uh, Crawlian influence of Detroit won't be mentioned. Neither will the Zionist influence. And that is those who say they are Jews, but I say they are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan, Revelations 2 and 9. Uh, Detroit was by and large ran by Jewish gangsters at one time. They called themselves the Purple Gang. And Proof, who was a very learned brother, the... Uh, teacher of Eminem who became his hype man sometime you gotta do what you gotta do but uh, he, he uh, called his crew the purple gang because he was a well read brother and he had read about that but that's how Detroit got its uh, gangster reputation really going but of course it was because of the Crowley ritual um, in effect uh, that uh Detroit got the energy that it ended up having the energy and the industry that it ended up having both results of the occultists that were members of Detroit's elite conjuring fallen angels the golden dawn the Ordo Templi Orientis uh, having their effect on the great city of Motown, which would produce some of the music, which is a magic, a supernatural force uh, that would shape American values. So again, what did we say? Cities that bring in revenue and or keep the Babylon way alive. You produce the songs for Babylon, ain't no mountain high enough and all the rest. You produce the songs for Babylon and I'm not picking on Marvin because if you know me, you know that's my main man, 50 grand, again and again and again. But after I read Divided Soul, and the Lord began to show me more about Project Janice, which we've got quite a few videos on on the channel, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on that, but he began to show me about the double-minded way that artists are mind-controlled and brainwashed from jump, Manchurian candidates from jump. Uh, Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, but also Marvin and his brother Frankie. But uh, the title of the book, Divided Soul, I know Marvin was struggling with some things and he was used to help put out the philosophies of Babylon of how young men and women should operate and, um, especially young brothers and sisters in the hood and the love song um, philosophy that is still ascribed to today was honed in Motown and that love song is really L-O-V-E, back with E-V-O-L, evil songs. Songs that create strife and or promote fornication and ungodliness between couples. Love songs. Enjoy them. Uh, so the cities that, the major cities that help keep Babylon running and flowing. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit. Philadelphia, Cincinnati, Cleveland. These places will be dealt with so fast. It's happening now. Just like it happened to Detroit. It's going to happen to all these other places. New York, they dealt with uh, in 2001 with the 9-11 ritual. But they're not done. Because the more you put in to Babylon, the more y'all is going to put you together. And I'm sorry, but uh, Detroit have put in a lot of murder, a lot of sacrifice, blood sacrifice. And New York have done so much.
for New Babylon that God got to keep putting hands on it. And I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking uh, death, destruction, or negativity or negativity over anyone's city or uh, home. But um, as I had to realize about my own home, who, uh, you know, I shown of love, I had to realize that Yah is unhappy with my home. He's unhappy with a lot of places, especially. And if Yeshua told his crew, hey, we got to leave here because of their unbelief, we can't do many miracles here. Then that means, and now this was the true and living in the flesh, but that means that a place's energy can be so wicked that the power of God cannot operate fully there. So Yah is moving some of the elect out of major cities, out of major centers for Babylon that he will soon judge and mash and into smaller places where there has not been a total takeover of the Babylon system where you still have people uh, who own their own stores and corporations have not totally dominated. Oftentimes because the corporation has slept on that place. Not enough people, not enough money. What a blessing. What a blessing that you come from a place like that. And what a blessing if Yah is preserving you and making moves in your life, making supernatural provision for you to move from out of that big city to somewhere smaller. You thank him. Get on your knees, drop your face to the floor, and you thank him. Because he's preserving you. Please believe it. Hear me now? Believe me later. Men's hearts will fail them. So get your mind right and ready. Because uh, the new world order won't have to kill us all. So many of us, because you done ate so many burgers... And you just sat down with Pastor Poke Chop and Red Lobster so many times. Your heart just waiting to stop. And all it's going to take is a, a minor shock. So, you know, I do speak life over you. And I, and I speak uh, that you don't have fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. And God is not the author of confusion. So when you see this confusing weather, don't put it on the most high. But he's allowing it. He's not producing it or creating it. He cannot produce or create confusion. But he can allow for the devil to execute his wrath upon those who are out of pocket. And you join in with the rest of the people in your city in their devilment, then you're going to be judged with the rest of them. Consider Jonah and Nineveh. Consider when um, God put his judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's the same dynamic that we're looking at here. He's tired of it. He's had enough. How long? Oh, you simple ones, how long will you love simplicity? So we're looking at population reduction being achieved primarily by mashing the major cities. Makes sense. How long would it take to reduce population if you went city by city? No, you get the big centers and you're scoring big time. Now, now we're seeing devils moving to subterranean hideouts. The dumbs, deep underground military bases. Hiding in the mountains, hiding in pyramids, and hiding in rocks. Scripture says that they will hide in the mountains, but Yah will find them. And, this, and everything they do is a, a, a sloppy copy. So the same way they're going to be hiding out in the mountains and thinking they're going to get away in their deep underground military bases and the Most High going to shake them up out of there with earthquakes. He's going to supernaturally hide us under the shadow of his wings. For he is our rock, our refuge, our buckler, our ever-present help in trouble. And he will supernaturally move you to where the enemy can't find you. He will supernaturally sustain you to where the enemy cannot harm your provision please believe it please receive it get right or get left now these devils will be moving to their subterranean hideouts well you know before 
we saw how they were making moves certain ones to certain areas that had a reputation for particular soul energies coming out of those places Bill Clinton moved to Harlem everybody's wondering why oh well he liked the brothers simple 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 I do not like simplicity and you know people get it twisted when I relax and, and go into Ebonics mode full force and, and you know I'm around people that I feel like I can trust and I just really relax and talk relaxed and I don't mean cuss you know I might drop one every now and then but I mean just really just relax and not be so uh, uh, proper with my speech uh, my, uh, my, my sentence structure and whatnot. you know people had a nerve to sleep on me and, and you know it's not me I'm nothing and no one but they have the nerve to think that the Holy Spirit in me is bound to proper speech and so when I drop it you know they think I've dropped my guard and they begin to think simple things and you know it, it really irks me then they want to engage me in simple conversation no I'm just relaxing my mouthpiece I'm, this ain't relaxing a, a bit can't relax thank you Jesus but yeah Clinton came to Harlem and we know Har Harlem Harlem is a Hebrew word or name the names and the words are the same names are named after Hebrew words what word is it? look it up that'll give you some insight into Harlem when I want it Harlem World Harlem Shake James Cargo moved to New Orleans, which of course we know is the crescent moon city. And the crescent moon, if you look up in the skies these days, you will find that the crescent is not on the left or the right, as it was conventionally all of my life as a child who liked to draw and would draw heavenly bodies from time to time, as all children do. You know how to draw a sun. You know how to make a star. Well, when you drew the moon, oftentimes to really denote that it was the moon you would draw it in its crescent phase which appears on the left or the right side why is it on the bottom these days the crescent is now appearing at the bottom as it does on the uh, Islamic flag I believe it appears on the bottom yeah right and there's a star up over the top and also um, in a couple of corporate logos but you know so so somebody knew that this that the moon was going to do that or somebody knew that eventually there would be technology to make it appear like the moon is doing that don't let that part escape you my brothers and sisters do overstand project blue beam which is the project to create the illusion of certain anomalies in the sky up to and including an alien invasion which they've prepared us for all of these things through their Hollywood programming and their television programs, channel, channel to channel, an unclean spirit, station, a military term. Dig it. So James Cargo goes to New Orleans, uh, home of Fudan, Shango, what they call black craft down there. And then Sean Penn to Haiti or Hades, named after hell itself in the Greek. They play tricks with the letters. They'll tell you it means this and that and the third in French, which is French and Spanish and Italian all share similar words for numbers and whatnot because they all share a Latin connection. Latin was the language of Rome and Rome derived from Greece and in Greece hell was Hades stuff ain't that hard to do it I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer I'm trying to tell you so uh, you had these devils running to these particular places oddly enough and I'm not calling them devils because of any other reason that they're, they're devilish Obama is a devil and Oprah's fat buddy is too devils is devils on every levels but um, they were feeding off of the spirit 
the soul or the melanin, particularly uh, when you see the black woman and black baby craze of Hollywood. They're not getting them because they feeling them like that these days. Madonna just felt so heartfelt that she wanted to help a black child. Angelina Jolie with her blood in a, uh, a, a necklace wearing self. Her and Billy Bob Thornton, really weird people. And of course, Jolie, you know, maybe we shouldn't be so harsh on her because she's generational, isn't she? John Voight gave up his baby girl and she was raised up in that system. And now look at her. She's paid the price. She lived her, her time being the finest, baddest thing in Hollywood. And now look at her. She's losing her breasts. See how the devil do you in the end? That's what make him the devil. He can't keep it on the level. If in the end he made sure you was tight, then he'd be God. But for him to be the devil, in the end, he got to get you in the end. He's going to put some foot to you. Please believe it. And then, of course, uh, you know, you have Michael Jackson's Lego curse. And so, you know, people don't be so hard on Mike. Because I'm going to tell you, if you really think about it, you know, use your if-thens. He was a boy when they brought him into the hookup. And he, too, generational. We talked about that on the uh, Boule video. How you have this generational thing, this phenomenon of giving up your children to the fire, quote unquote, to the fire. But but really what they're giving up their children to is a system, a Babylonian system, which is a fire, okay? Figurative fire. They're throwing them into the system, throwing, in, throwing them into the figurative fire. And the system is run by the pagan uh, 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 deities, you know, the, the pagan god, Lucifer who has many names, and back in those times, they might have been throwing the children to Moloch, nothing but another name for Lucifer. So there have been the, the, these devils. Um, I heard a uh, the uh, president or the high man, the top level big boss in the Vampire Church of America on a coast-to-coast -coast program say that, hey, you know, after he was asked by George Norrie, uh, you know, you guys still uh, suck blood and whatnot. And the guy kind of brushed it off, you know, with a laugh. I'm like, oh, no, 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 we don't do that anymore. It's like, that's become unsanitary in these days and times. Can you imagine that? You know, Dracula can't get his bite on because there's too many people burning and, and uh, too many people with the low T-cell counts walking around out here. So he said, well, you know, so now what we do is we feed off of energy. Blood is the life force. The, the life of a thing is in the blood, according to scripture. Or the life, the energy of a thing. So they know how to get your energy without drinking your blood, they say. So uh, uh, they, 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 they're sap sapping or feeding off of spirit. Some say literally off of the soul or the melanin. And this is supposedly what, what uh, many believe happened to Michael Jackson. Uh, the curse. You see, you can call one phenomenon by many different names. Depending on what belief system taught you the name of the phenomenon. The phenomenon don't change. It's still the same. The brother lost his color. One person might say it was because of a curse, because he was in the satanic music business. Then another person may get more scientific with that thing and say, well, you know, they were feeding off the brother's soul from the very beginning when he was young. And all the years of sucking him of that soul energy sucked him of that melanin. But you have to do a study on melanin for yourself and see how you feel about it. Uh, you know, we're not simply dark because of the sun. And again, you know, so what? At the end of the day, if you don't understand the Luciferian agenda, everything else you think you know will only confuse you. So you must understand the Luciferian agenda. The Luciferian agenda do not prefer black to white or white to black. Lucifer won't I'm all dead. And it, it, he's got a special beef with who he had a beef with in the beginning. The kings of the earth, who he first came to, 
whispered in the ear of and corrupted were the black kings of the earth. Who else was the kings of the earth at that time? I've said that in a few videos, but it's it's got to break through your hard head. Because a lot of brothers are still stuck on stupid. And still talking that same Egypto madness. And I'm telling you, call my name three times like the candy man. Because I'm ready for action. I'm ready for action. I'm tired of them. I've been, I've been sick of them. Y'all know I've been sick of them. Leading people astray. I've been down that road. The ye who dwell in the major cities, get right or get left. Let me tell you of the dreams I've had. I've had over 30 something dreams about being trapped in buildings that later became revealed to me were public school buildings. They closed over 50 Detroit public school buildings and public schools in Detroit are based upon neighborhoods. So they have centers in every neighborhood of Detroit that are closed but not torn down. Still in full effect that they're going to use to house people. They're going to call you down there for one reason and, one, and when you get down there, they're going to jam you up and you ain't going to be able to leave. And that's what I've had over 30 something dreams about now in hindsight and in comparing to other people. I know at least, I know two other people who have had dreams that are directly aligned with this. They confirm this, if you will. The sister's dreams were identical. And the brother who I'm referring to, his dream was not as identical, but still cut from the same cloth without a doubt. The wrath of a wroth I am. And we're trapped in these buildings that I've deduced to be public school buildings. If you read the Masonic Handbook, A Thousand and One Questions to Ask a Mason, different questions you can ask a Mason to test them out and see are they Masons, one of which is, are you a traveling man? Another of which is, who started the, the public school system? And the answer is the Masons. If a person knows that, they're likely a Mason. That's not well publicized among non-members. See? But yeah, in that book, it tells you all of the different little ones to say. If you can find one, I, I, I happen to stumble across a relative's old one. Um, so very quickly, uh, so yes, and, and you know, it says that in the last days, your, uh, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And, you know, dreams and visions shall pour out uh, as, as the Lord pours out his spirit in these last days, of course. So uh, we're going to also talk a little bit about dream warfare and, um, in the next video to come we'll go ahead and stick that in there i've got a really heavy duty teaching uh on that that the lord has laid on my heart uh, well, well a heavy duty teaching on gospel the new age and the black church and then i'm going to incorporate uh dream warriors and uh, how to defend yourself in the dream realm into that how am i gonna do that i'm not gonna do it the holy spirit will he'll see to it so you have some different examples of the importance of seeing signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Hezekiah, uh, by way of Isaiah, received a sign from the sun. Joshua's army, the sun was altered for a sign unto them. Uh, the wise men followed a star. A sun is a star, Matthew 2 and 2. Matthew 24 and 29 talks about Jesus' second coming and how it will be related to the signs in the stars and the moon. Genesis 1 and 14 and Genesis 1 and 1 shows us the importance that Yah himself connects to the heavenly bodies and how they are to be used as signs. Psalms 104 and 19, Luke 21 and 25, and Acts 2 and 20, all along the same lines. Now, last but not least, I have been bothered in my spirit about a blackout. And a lot of the unction that I get concerning that was sparked by both Super Bowl performances of uh, this year and last year. Beyonce's blackout at the Super Bowl, the blackout's relationship to 9-11 and how the lights came back on at 9-11, or the time on the clock was 9-11 when the blackout occurred, but the connection to 9-11 during Beyonce's Super Bowl performance of 2013, or last year, uh, 
it was key. And the subsequent mentions of Blackout ever since then. Even look at the movie Blackout. Look at the premiere and see if you don't see any Masonic code words. I did. Just on YouTube, look at the trailer for the, for the movie Blackout. It came out last year. And I, I, I watched it, not uh, looking for that, looking for some more information about the Blackout. And I saw, oh, there was a movie called Blackout. Oh, it just came out. And they tell tell many signs in movies for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And of course, Beyonce, we know, is the uh, representation of the queen of the heaven or of um, Ashtar, uh, uh, Ishtar, Astara, Astarte, uh, Isis. The representation of that on earth now when you see these entertainers when you see Lady Gaga you're not looking at Lady Gaga you're looking at proof positive of what Jesus said about the last days shall be as it was in the days of Noah what was going on in the days of Noah there was an, imp an impending disaster because of God's wrath on the way true but there were Nephilim in the earth the fallen ones not giants they can appear as giants as in the case of the Transformers or of the Incredible Hulk. But the fallen ones, you see, are angelic beings that don't have form the way that we know it. And they can fit in any vessel. So we find, um, when you're looking at Gaga or when you're looking at Beyonce, you're looking at the entity that's in them receiving praise from you. And so we have this year's Super Bowl performance, and then we're going to shut it down for the night. I got to get some rest before service in uh, a few hours. Uh, Bruno Mars, first of all, the name stuck out, jumped out at me. Mars, they're, they're going to relate Mars to the false flag of Project Blue Beam alien invasion. Mars will figure prominently. Please believe it, because Mars is the god of war. Mars is Ares, Roman style. Ares uh, is the Greek, and Mars is the Roman of the same god, the god of war. Mars, if you turn the M, which is a symbol, the same symbol as W, upside down. So flip it up, and Mars becomes wars, and rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of Mars. Mars and rumors of wars. Mars and war and martial law. Blood killing. War. Martial law meaning the soldiers are policing you. And of course that is on the horizon because when Yah judges these cities there's going to be a lot of chaos and turmoil. Total chaos, no mass confusion. And so you saw the word prepare flash right before Bruno began his horrendous bisexual boule but burglar in performance. And yes, I have something against them. They ain't even got it natural. These was regular brothers who gave up their manhood in exchange for success in life. And that's the lowest of the low. So you ought to get blazed every chance you get. So with that, brothers and sisters, we're going to shut it down for the night. I thank you and I appreciate you again for your viewership, for your comments, for your criticisms, and for your fellowship. You know, Because this is a ministry. And you are part of the body of that ministry, a temple of the true Yahshua and I thank you uh, for your fellowship for your camaraderie for your viewership and for your prayers and I pray for you as well I pray that the most high find favor uh, in you and in everything that you do in according to his will walk in his perfect will today be a blessing to somebody to see a blessing be a blessing Shalom